It's 4 a.m., three days before Christmas, and I'm at the admitting section of the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology of the Philippine General Hospital. I'm a third-year medical student, and I am very thrilled that for the first time, I'll be meeting real patients, conducting real procedures, and managing real cases. As most of what I know in medicine came straight from books and lectures and discussions that I had during my first two years in med school. The section is empty, it's quiet. All our patients have already been transferred to the wards. But all of a sudden, there is this one resident, resident physician in the nearby delivery room who poke her head looking for a student who will accompany one of her patients, uh, an expectant mother, to the ultrasound room, which happens to be at the opposite wing of that hospital. I'm the first one she sees, and so I got the job, and uh, I go and find a patient, review her folder, grab the metal stretcher, and begin our journey. The corridor, it's very quiet. There are no people around at 4 a.m. It's also very dark. Uh, the lights are off, maybe because the hospital is saving on electricity. In fact, I begin remembering the stories of ghosts of dead patients and professors lurking in the century-old hospital. But I just brush all these negative thoughts and we keep on moving until after a short while we reach our destination. I'm already about to, to touch the doorknob when I feel a hand grab my left arm and then I turn my head and see the face of the patient in excruciating pain. And she tells me, Doc, I think she's coming out. I am in deep shock. I do not, I did not expect this from happening. I never delivered a baby before. And so my only option is to bring back this mother to the delivery room as fast as I can. I instruct the mother to cling to the side bars of the metal stretcher with both of her hands, and then I begin pushing the metal stretcher, and then I am running, and then I am running, I'm running, and then I'm sweating, and then I'm running, I'm running until I hear a scream that consumes the entire corridor. She is coming out! <laughs> and then I stop. And then I park the metal stretcher close to the wall. And I advise the mother to take a few deep breaths. And then I raise the blanket covering her legs. And then I see the head of the baby popping out. I immediately extended my arm so that her head does not hit the metal bed. And then after a few seconds, her whole body is on my hands. I can feel the amniotic fluid coating her skin, <laughs> but also the slight movements of her arms and legs and her rapid heartbeat. And then she begins crying. And then I bring her close to her mother's breasts. And then I see the face of the mother turn into a beaming smile. It's Christmas time. And it feels like the nativity scene with a blessed mother, the blessed baby, and me, the unblessed donkey that brought them to the manger. What a marvelous sight. And then it hits me that 30 minutes within the delivery of the baby, the placenta will come out. And I do not have gloves with me to catch that bloody placenta. And by the way, the baby is still connected to the placenta. I, I need to cut the umbilical cord, and I do not have a pair of scissors either. And so I, again, advise the mother to 
hold on to the metal bars of that stretcher, this time with just one hand because she's carrying the baby with the other, and then I begin pushing the metal stretcher, and then I am running once more, I'm running again, and I'm still sweating, and I am running and running, and then at the far end, I can see the doors of the delivery room, and then I begin shouting, baby out, baby out, and then a few seconds later, the doors of the delivery room open just like the gates of heaven. And then the crew, the crew emerged with the doctors, the nurses, and my fellow medical students. The nurses are the first ones to respond. They bring the metal stretcher along with the mother and the child all the way to the delivery room. And then the doctors follow to finish the procedure and uh, perform some post-delivery rituals. But my classmates, my supposedly supportive classmates, they remain standing, staring at me, and then they begin chuckling. I, might, I must, be, may, must really look very funny at that moment. But deep inside, I begin recalling all the events, the crazy events that just happened a few minutes ago. Have no gloves. I have no delivery room, I have no senior resident who's supposed to supervise a third-year medical student in these kinds of procedures, I have no prior experience delivering a baby. But still, I manage to make it. And then I tell myself, Renzo, at last, welcome to the wild and wacky world of medicine. Ladies and gentlemen, Renzo Ginto.